Howdy. The purpose of this video is to talk about uh, the structure of polymers. And specifically, we're going to talk about how do polymer molecules arrange themselves with respect to other polymer molecules. Now, we've already talked about a couple things. We've talked about uh, metals, which we usually describe in terms of hard sphere, close packed models. Uh, so we think of individual atoms as spheres, and we say, how can we arrange those spheres with respect to other spheres? We've talked about ionic structures, which also um, adopt hard sphere, close packed models. But in this case, we have the added complexity of the fact that we have some positively charged and some negatively charged ions. So we need to maximize the attractive forces while minimizing those repulsive forces. But polymers are totally different beasts entirely, right? A polymer uh, is composed of a number of molecules. Each molecule is very, very long um, with a bunch of repeat units. So this would be the repeat unit for this particular molecule. But this could easily be thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of atoms long along the chain. And so it's very difficult to envision how I, how I could arrange these really long chains uh, in such a way to form a periodic order, because that's what we're talking about when we talk about crystal structure. Um, so how do they do that? How do polymers arrange uh, themselves in a crystalline fashion? Uh, and the answer to that question is that they want to line up. So I have um, chains of polymers that are lined up parallel to other chains, right? So this is uh, an example of polyethylene. The repeat unit of polyethylene is given by two carbons. Each carbon has two hydrogens coming off it. So this is probably one of the most basic polymers that, uh, that we can think about. Um, and we see a unit cell. So this you know, looks a little bit different from some of the unit cells that you've seen before uh, for metals and for ionic ceramics. It's a little bit longer, maybe not as symmetric. Um, the atoms are arranged in somewhat unusual, not high symmetry positions. Uh, but it behaves just like other crystalline systems. So if I took that unit cell and I translated it up, I could draw uh, the unit cell immediately above it, and it would look exactly identical to that original unit cell. So again, I can repeat and fill up all space by um, repeating this unit cell. So another thing to keep in mind is that um, polymers tend to have strong covalent bonding along the backbone, so between the carbon atoms in this case. Uh, now, the, the bonding between polymer chains is relatively weak. This is a form of secondary bonding, or van der Waals bonding. And what that means is that individual carbon chains, or polymer chains, uh, can move with respect to their neighbors. So that chain could move up and down. And so polymers tend to be very dynamic systems. Okay, um, so that's a sort of idealized, perfect uh, model of crystal, uh, crystallinity in polymers. What does it look like um, in real systems? So this is the result of some computer simulation work, uh, working with a bunch of long chains of polymers. And uh, this is what we uh, see experimentally as well. Polymers tend to have fairly crystalline regions, and if I could uh, identify some small area there, it would look just like that unit cell uh, that we just looked at. Um, but there's a, a crystalline region here that, that is fairly coherent long-range order, um, but it's surrounded by regions that are amorphous. So the structure in this region uh, is relatively unpredictable. I can't translate from here over to here and see the same structure. So this is what we call a lamella, this uh, region of crystalline material that's surrounded by uh, non-crystalline polymers. Um, as opposed to metals and ionic materials, which can uh, essentially become 100% crystalline, it's impossible for polymers to achieve that. And that's just because we have these long floppy molecules, you can't get all of them lined up perfectly. Um, so there's always some amorphous region. And we call that semi-crystalline. It's only partially crystalline. Um, we oftentimes also talk about a chain folded model. And what that means is that each of these uh, chains that I see is not its own unique polymer, right? I can see cases where one polymer chain comes up, loops down, and so its neighboring chain is actually itself that's folded back over. Uh, and to make that a little more clear, here I have a 
image from this same study. Um, in this case, I've, uh, I've I, not I, the, the authors have highlighted individual polymer chains uh, with their own unique color. And so you can see a region like this where one chain has come down, it's folded, and so the bonding is between that same chain folded back on itself. These are also snapshots in time, A to B to C to D. And so you can see in this case, it's a crystalline material, but there is some motion, right? So look at this bright green one. Um, it starts there, but it starts to come out. More of it is coming out and more of it has slid out. So this emphasizes that fact that uh, polymer chains can slide past each other relatively easily because of that weaker secondary bonding uh, that I see. Okay, let's zoom out one more uh, level. Um, so this is something I could see with an optical microscope now. Uh, and if I look at polymers, if I look at semi-crystalline polymers, I see what are called spherulites. And they're called that because they are spherical in nature. Um, if I get enough of them, they start to impinge on each other. And that means that I'll get these nice geometrical shapes. So they can't be spheres because they've occupied all the space. Um, and this is similar to a grain structure in metals. But if I zoom in, I look at one of those spheres, I find out that it's composed of lamella, so crystalline chain folded sheets, and regions of amorphous material in between. And then maybe I would have another lamella and some more amorphous polymers. Um, so this spherulite is not 100% crystalline, even though it looks like one contiguous thing uh, at an optical wavelength. It's actually composed of regions of crystalline material in these lamellas um, that are separated by amorphous regions. But this is oftentimes, uh, this is a common microstructure that we see in many semi-crystalline polymers. Okay, finally, a summary. So we talked about crystallinity in polymers, how that's different from metals and ionic materials. We talked about this chain folding sheet model, uh, what are lamella, and finally, what are spherulites.